Once upon a time in a small village, there lived a beautiful young woman called Oke. Her beauty was undeniable, casting a radiant glow on her countenance. Yet, a figure, tall and slender, set her apart from the other women in the village who are chubby and round. Despite her undeniable charm, Oke's mother Tinola complained persistently over her daughter's appearance. In a society where marriage prospects were often tied to physical law, Tinola lamented that Oke's slender frame did not attract the attention of wealthy suitors as effortlessly as the fuller figures of the other village maidens. See Jadiola, the daughter of a cocoa farmer, I heard a wealthy suitor from a neighboring village sought her hand in marriage solely because she is well packaged. Tinola scolded Oke, drink the herbs, my dear, and let them weave humanly curves upon your frame, as you have turned me into a laughing stock among the women in the village. But Oke hesitated, protesting softly before reluctantly accepting the herbs. But Tade, the hunter, came seeking my hand in marriage three nights ago. You chased him away. Huh? Why won't I chase him away? Tinola, her mother raised a voice. A hunter, a poor man. What can a hunter offer us in terms of riches? Can he even afford a grand wedding like that of Jadesola? Our wedding was the talk of the village. But Tabe is a good man. Will you keep quiet? Her mother shouted at her. Drink the potion quickly and don't waste my time. I have to travel beyond the mountains just to meet with the great magician there. He said after you drink the potion, you will sleep for five days and during those periods, the potion shall do wonders to your body. So Oke okay, drank the herbs and slept off. But on the fifth day, Tinwala went to her bed, but Oke okay did not respond. Tinwala panicked. She ran back to where she had met the magician, but the earth was empty. She ran back to the village and went to the chief priest. Please, Oke is asleep. It's five days now, Tinola cried. But woman, I warned you the last time you came to me, said the chief priest. I told you to be concerned with what you have. Please, have mercy on me. So the chief priest consulted the oracle and said, Woman, I have bad news. Oke shall sleep for five years. The magician did this to teach you a valuable lesson of contentment. Go and bathe her body every day, for she will wake after five years. Tinwala's predicament becomes the talk of the village, and with every passing day, the villagers laughed more at her. I heard her daughter is now all bone, no flesh again. A seller in the market whispered as Tinola walked through the market. No one will ever marry a daughter again. Tinola heard the seller's word. Tinola went home and cried. She prayed for a second chance, but no miracle came forth until when the portion time of five years expired. Oke sneezed from where she had lain for the past five years. She opened her eyes and it seems like the light shone too brightly. She stepped out to look for her mother. The villagers pointed at her and laughed. At first, she doesn't know what amused the villagers. So she laughed along. But she realized she ran into the hut to remain hidden for the rest of her life. However, Sadie saw beyond appearance, the local hunter whose heart was captivated by Oke's inner beauty and gentle spirit, sought her hand in marriage. For when Tade heard that Oke is awake, his spirit lifted. He was happy and he rushed to Oke's mother. Please, let me marry your daughter, Tade said. For Oke is a woman of good character and I love her. Tinola couldn't believe anyone could come for her daughter's hand in marriage especially 
in this condition. So she immediately agreed to Tade's proposal. I shall give you my daughter for free. Please, take away my shame. So Tade took Oke into his hut. And since he is a hunter, every day he will catch different kinds of bush meat for Oke. He kept on feeding her on delicious meat. And soon, Oke did not just gain back her flesh, but she became full, round, and more graceful. Just like a mother had always wanted. When the news of Oke's new appearance got to Tinoala's hearing, she requested for her daughter back, as Tinoala was still swayed by societal expectations and blinded by a vision of prosperity. She opposed the union and started fighting Tade when he refused to return back a daughter. So Tinoala said, If not that you are a wicked man, who will take a full grown woman for free in our culture? Without paying bright price, give me back my daughter and let me look for a suitable and wealthy man for her. Oke okay, couldn't believe her mother's words and despite her mother's objection, Oke's okay, heart leaned towards the hunter, drawn to his sincerity and affection. And in order to avoid her mother's relentless pressure, Oke okay, made a decision that would alter the course of her life forever. As Oke told Tade one fateful evening, let us run away from my mother's reach. Let us go far and farther beyond the mountains. With a heavy heart, but a resolute spirit, Oke fled from the confines of her mother. Though she will miss her mother greatly, but enough is enough. And that is how Oke and Tade vanished completely from the village without leaving a single trace. When Tinola heard, she wept bitterly. For now, she realized that she has lost her only daughter for life. The lesson from this story is that parents should learn never to compare their children with other children as our strength lies in our differences. Also, mounting unnecessary pressure on children can have adverse effects. So beyond the mountains and far away from Tinola, Oke and Tade lived a happy life. The end.